Ryan in the press conference, you said you got some tricks up your sleeve this year. New changes to your technique. Yeah. What can you share right now? Um, yeah, so I'm kind of waiting to unveil it in the comp, but I think you'll be able to see. So I'm starting round, I'll start round one with a norm, my normal static start, uh, with it being early season and wanting to get a decent mark. And so static in round one, and hopefully if it's a good static, then I'll move to the new technique in round two. And you'll definitely be able to tell right away because I'll start in a different part of the ring. It'll be a, yeah, so it's it definitely will be, I, I would think, noticeable to even non of fans. And so um, I've been working on it since mid-December, so it's still pretty, pretty new. Um, but it has some really promising aspects of it in training. The consistency is still not there, but the top end is, is much higher than than my normal technique. So I'm excited to see how it does in a meet. Um, yeah, it, it could be, if I can do everything right, it, it should, the small should go really far, but um, it is it is more complex than my normal technique. There's there's an extra movement added, so uh, getting, it, getting the ball to go and getting the ball to go in practice are a little bit different things, so we'll see how it holds up under pressure. All right, so practice doesn't count uh, for world records or anything like that, but you said it's gone it's gone far? Like, I mean, are we talking as far as the indoor world record that you've got? Um, not yet, but I would even, just from a training perspective, I just learned from experience that throwing far in December and January just beats me up. So it's been, I've been throwing far with it considering the time of year. So um, have not thrown it over the, the indoor world record, but I wouldn't expect to, especially this early in the year. Um, yeah, that will that will come kind of as I taper down. And this is the first week of starting to taper. So body's starting to feel good because I've been doing eight, sixes, and fives in the weight room up until uh, last week. So the body's just kind of beat down and it's hard to, hard to throw far when you're loaded up in the weight room like that. So, um, yeah, it's more of basing the distances off of my stand throws and stat, like my flat, my normal throwing technique. Um, so what I'm looking at this time of year is the spread. So I'm looking at what's my stand throw, what's my full technique, and then, okay, the new technique is going about 75 centimeters farther um, on a good day a meter farther than, than my static. So that's a better spread than I have with my normal full, which is about 50 centimeters. So that part is the is the exciting part, knowing that, okay, I'm not throwing far distances, but I'm throwing farther than I normally am this time of year. So that's the exciting part. What do we call on the new? Spot? I don't know. Um, yeah, the one person that I train with nicknamed it the Krauser Slide. So okay. We'll see if that that might be stick. That might stick. I just call it the step across when I write it down in my training journal. Um, but so yeah, the Krauser Slide is the unofficial nickname, I guess. Uh, can you describe that holy shit moment in practice when it was like you might be onto something here with this thing? Because it's sort of like you know you mastered the shot put for a bit, but there's always room for, for learning and improvement. Yeah, so I've like always kind of messed around with new techniques and just like trying to add something or do something different. And th th there's been some that have been like, oh, that's promising. But the biggest issue for me is that the ring is too small. So I've always been combined to the shot being in a seven foot ring. Where if we had a discus ring, I could do a lot more. Um, but being 6'7", I'm pretty limited. So I've messed around with new techniques off and on since like, I don't know, 2014. And so, yeah, one day I was just at home and having a really like rough practice. I was like, man, there's gotta be something better than this. And so I just like, uh, what if I, what if I tried to line more and like move around in the ring? And I just had a throw that was like, whoa, that was, that actually felt pretty good. Um, and that, felt like I could improve on my normal full and then I just was having the worst throwing day in practice and ended up throwing almost a meter farther the very first day with it um, than what my really bad practice had been. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to stick with this for, give it one week and at the end of the week I was throwing quite a bit farther and that was in, in early December or actually like mid-December. And so I've kind of figured I would commit to it until January 1st and then make the call. 
January 1st, it was still getting better, so I've stuck with it. And so we'll see how it goes in the meet. Hopefully it, it holds up um, and does well, because it, it is more complex than my normal movement, so there's more to go. There's more top side, but there's also more to go wrong. I know you don't like losing, and like your dominance has been a big thing over the last couple of years, but uh, this, I mean, it sounds like you're taking a little bit more risks this year. Yeah, so I mean, for me, the biggest goal right now is pushing out my world record farther. Uh, mostly outdoors. I mean, I would love to break the indoor record. Just the way the indoor season is structured this year with things being relatively early, um, it'll be a very short indoor season. And so the focus on it is moving that outdoor world record farther. And I think that the new technique leans itself to throwing farther. Um, maybe at the, early on at the cost of some consistency. So it's a, it's a work in progress, but with the goal of throwing as far as possible in mind, I'm, I'm giving it an honest shot. High school, college kids, they're gonna see this thing on Saturday. Yeah. How long does it take to learn? For someone to like, they're gonna be like, oh, maybe I should try that. Yeah, so it's very, pretty straightforward. It's not one that like, you'll have to reverse engineer. I mean, if someone watches it, they'll be like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, now the difference between doing it and doing it well, I feel like is, is the big issue. And so I feel like if I, tried it a few years ago especially like say pre-2019 i would have had a really really difficult time it took me kind of mastering or getting close to mastering the my pass shot put technique to be able to add this extra movement to it and so i think we'll see a lot of kids do it i'll be interested to see because i feel like a younger athlete that's really flexible and doesn't really know what they're doing might be able to pull it off faster than me at 30 years old trying to trying to invent this new technique. So I feel like there is upside, but I'll be interested to see. I, I'm sure there'll be some some posts on social media of people trying it. Awesome. Appreciate it, Ryan. Looking forward to it. Yeah, you're welcome.